These are GPS markers of liquid natural gas tankers in the English Channel. Many are idling or sailing slowly, much like this other cluster in the Gulf of Cadiz off the coast of Spain. Each of these ships is carrying enough liquefied natural gas to heat a million homes a month, but they can't unload their cargo, at least not right now. A lot's at stake. The economy would really nosedive if stores of gas were to run out. So, what's behind these tanker traffic jams? And what might they mean for Europe's energy needs this winter? European nations are racing to store natural gas, a commodity the continent relies on to fuel its factories, power its cities, and heat its homes. But recent supply chain bottlenecks threaten to undermine Europe's energy security. Until recently, Europe relied on Russia for about 40% of the natural gas it used to heat its homes and power its industries. But this year's Russian war in Ukraine threw Europe into its biggest energy crisis since the 1970s. Before the war, about half of the Russian gas that ended up in Europe via pipeline was transported by the Nord Stream 1 pipeline, which runs under the Baltic Sea connecting Russia's Siberian gas fields to Germany. But in June, Russian gas giant Gazprom began reducing gas flows through the pipeline. We are working on uh, the uh, worst possible scenario. Then, in September, Russian indefinitely suspended natural gas flows to Europe via Nord Stream. Later that month, European authorities released footage of the Baltic Sea bubbling amid reports of unexplained leaks from the Nord Stream pipelines. It was a, a deliberate act of sabotage. Putin has launched Russia's first mobilization since World War II. And since many months, he is using energy as a weapon. Western governments and intelligence agencies haven't yet named a suspected culprit. With the pipelines no longer operational, European leaders have turned to other countries, like the United States and Qatar, to supply the continent's natural gas. But rebuilding Europe's natural gas supply chain hasn't been easy. To begin with, there are not enough regasification terminals for the tankers to offload their gas. Regasification terminals are huge plants built on the coastline. They take in liquefied natural gas tankers. They turn that liquid gas back into a gas and pump it into the domestic network. There are quite a few of them in Europe, but they're not distributed evenly. You have a lot in the UK, in Spain, and in Portugal. You don't have any at all in Germany. Compounding the issue is a lack of storage. Europe simply does not have enough space to keep the gas. Europe does have a lot of gas in storage. It stores gas in caverns, underground, and in tanks. For the past half century, Europe has been able to rely on a very steady supply of Russian gas, so there was no need to build even bigger storage uh, facilities. For now, many of these giant ships are serving as temporary offshore gas storage facilities, which has resulted in part from a market dynamic known as contango. Contango is a technical term used by traders for a situation where a commodity costs less if the trader sells it tomorrow than it costs if the trader agrees to sell it in several months' time. And it's a way in which the market encourages traders to hold on to a commodity such as gas to store it for when it is needed later in the year or early next year. This chart tracks the difference between liquid natural gas prices next month compared to prices in two months' time. As you can see, on September 15th, a trader would make $3.42 per million British thermal units if they held their tanker at sea until November rather than if they offloaded the gas in October. A month later, on October 13th, that gap had more than doubled to about $7.50 per million British thermal units if they sold in December rather than in November. The original target was to fill storage facilities to 80% of their total capacity by November 1st. That target has been met and exceeded far ahead of schedule. The latest data suggests storage is now at nearly 95% in total. European natural gas prices have plunged more than 70% since hitting an all-time high in late August, after storage facilities across the continent filled close to capacity. But there isn't enough storage to get through winter if several things go wrong, for example, if it's very cold, if Russian supplies stop altogether, and if supplies from Norway or the US get disrupted in some way. 